अक्षता यू आर ऑडिबल या आई गेस शिंजनी मैम वेट डिड शी इवन सर इज नॉट हियर आई थिंक Uh, here we have a year. In fact, there's some range problem of picking something. In yeah. Okay. Please okay. go area. Yeah. Right. Yes, yeah, sir. You can continue. Shinshni, you're on mute. <laughs> Just Is online problems. <laughs> yes, 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 definitely. Okay. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, I just I want to start with kind of the problem statement because I think it's really important to uh, know that and to figure out kind of where we're starting. There is a lack of uh, coverage uh, on young women. There is a lack of coverage on motivation. There is a lack of coverage on really any positive energy in the media. You know, in terms of motivating me, motivating Akshita, motivating Kosta, motivating any any person to achieve their goals. you know and i think if you look at kind of the uh problem it, it's actually only growing you know and it's interesting because i had these realizations when i was 16 you know when i was 15 when i was 14 and a lot of you are older than that but now i'm 29 and guess what i'm having more of those realizations not less you know so i think the the environment is becoming more worse in some ways not less bad right and so it's a combination of a lack of positive energy a lack of motivational media a lack of young women representation a lack of young women building technology businesses media businesses you know because even in america now there is a huge a uh, explosion of female founders right who are getting capital who are crowdfunding who are being self funded but if you look at the domains that they're starting businesses in it is quintessentially female oriented domains right so you know fashion makeup beauty which is fantastic and and i love all of that but i'm also an engineer right i'm also an industrial engineer from georgia tech a lot of you uh, want to be engineers a lot of you are business technology so when you look at that demographic i mean someone like me is completely missing you know from that demographic i mean when i graduated from georgia tech I, it was 70% male you know and in america 70% mostly white male right and so where do i where do i fit in you know and those were the questions that i was struggling with honestly my whole life i would say right so i was born in india i was born in calcutta kolkata right um i uh, and uh, lived in india till i was 5 5 years old right grandparents are there my my whole family is there even now other than my immediate parents and my little sister everybody <laughs> is in kolkata um so we are one of the rare indian families where we are the only ones who immigrated uh to america everybody else is still there we call all the time we visit all the time which is why i feel so indian despite having not been in india for the last you know god knows how long now right uh 24 years right uh so was in india my family and i moved to malaysia uh, kuala lumpur which i'm sure you know you're very familiar with malaysia is a very uh popular country uh for indians uh and then and then moved to america when i was 9 and i think when that happened uh, most of my friends here were born in america you know lived here their whole life indians indian americans lived in america their whole life and so i was always the odd one out right that i was not born here i am indian but i've left india but i'm also from malaysia but i'm also american and so my whole life i've dealt with this sort of third culture kid problem you know and even in india you can deal with that right your mom is punjabi your dad is south indian you know your sister speaks bengali you know and you're dating your boyfriend is you know gujarati i mean so it's not just like white and black and this it can also be in india right you can have this sort of like where do i belong and so my whole life that was what plagued me that where do i belong what who am i you know and i tried to i just tried to do what i like you know and so public speaking found me when i was um uh, 14 and i just gave a speech eighth grade graduation uh, and uh, everybody's like oh my god you have to do this and that's when i realized that 
what I'm able to do is a skill because I don't think as most Indians, I didn't uh, realize that this is actually a skill. This is actually something that, you know, people train in public speaking. And so that's that was sort of my um, journey, public speaking, went to high school, did speech and debate, right? Won a lot of competitions in public speaking, uh, original oratory, never before trained in a public speaking class. I've, I've still have never taken a public speaking class. I'm self-taught. Uh, and, um, you know, a lot of coaches, a lot of help, et cetera. Uh, and I won all those competitions at 15, at 16, at 17. And that's when I decided it's time to go to college, right, at 18. And, um, and what do I even major in in college, right? That's probably something that a lot of you are struggling with, right? Uh, and I knew that I don't want to major in communication because that is my natural skill. I don't want to uh, major in marketing because that is my natural skill but I want to major in engineering. And so that's how I came upon industrial engineering at Georgia Tech, which essentially is like processes, people, um, you know, optimization. Uh, and, and that was just very appealing to me that it's like business, it's engineering, it's a combination of things. And so I majored in industrial engineering at Georgia Tech uh, here in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and I graduated in 2014. And I had a full scholarship merit scholarship um i did not i, I made a profit in college uh, because they they paid for you know me to go and i think a lot of it was because i was a different profile of an engineer right i was a public speaker i was a young female and so a lot of things like everybody was very excited about when i graduated and then i was a commencement speaker at georgia tech which is your um graduation speaker right and uh, again very very white school at the time you know, and so for me to be the um, speaker, uh, commencement speaker, undergraduate speaker, um, it was a huge deal. It, it was absolutely massive in 2014, right, seven years ago. And so, uh, you know, for me, that was a pivotal moment when I graduated because I, I realized that, uh, first of all, I'm really good at sort of motivating people and inspiring people and engaging people, but also I'm really good at you know, inspiring them to believe in themselves. And I think that was my my first real epiphany at in 2014 when I was 22, uh, that, you know, I really want to do this professionally. And so, uh, because people ask me all the time, right? So you grew up public speaking, I won a lot of competitions. At what point did you decide that you really want to do this as a career? And for me, that point was the graduation speech at Georgia Tech when I was 22. Uh, and looking out onto this huge audience, huge stadium, you know, and also realizing that, you know, I, someone like me, I've never, I've never seen, you know, someone like me, I've never heard from someone like me, you know, young Indian female speakers, you know, young Indians who inspire me, you know, I don't even have that now, <laughs> you know, seven years later, you know, in that capacity. So I think there was a huge market um, that I wanted to, uh, you know, uh, get, you know, and that I wanted to uh, acquire. And so that was at 22, right? Uh, and I decided, I said, I really want to do this full time, right? And so that, I, and so for the last seven years, really, honestly, you, you've caught me at a good time, right? Which is, I've been trying to figure out what that is. You know, what, what is that? Is that public speaking full time? Is that being a motivational speaker full time? Is that starting a media company? And so that's where I was between sort of 22 and 24, you know, is figuring out kind of, what do I want to do, you know, uh, and, and very quickly, very quickly, which is why I think this is sort of interesting. The journey became, I want to start a business, right? And much like you, I'm sure that's one of the most popular questions is what business do I start? You know, what business do I start? And so for me, I did a lot of research in terms of what is really bothering me about the media right now, right? And again, I came up with lack of young women representation, right? It's very, very uh, male, right? It's all men. Um, there's no young women. There's no young Indians. Uh, there's no motivation. There's no personalized motivation, right? And I came to all of that. And all of these people, I feel like, are not achieving their goals, right? Um, because nobody motivates them honestly, right? That's the problem. Nobody motivates them in the media, in their homes, in anything to achieve their goals, right? And so a lot of people are falling off the train, really, right? Like they're dropping out of school, they're doing drugs, 
you know, they're, you know, just, just youth, youth are going off track because there is no role model. There is no motivation. Nobody cares about them. And so that I, I had all these thoughts and I said, you know what, I'm going to start a media company. That's what I'm going to do because I myself am a motivational speaker and I can start as the vessel, but as my platform grows, obviously I can hire a team. I can, you know, produce more content. I can, you know, have my own TV show. I can, you know, have my own app. I mean, really the possibilities are, are endless, right? With what you can do once you're successful as a media company. And so I started it at 24. Uh, so that was uh, in 2016. Uh, and so again, you caught me at a good time because last week on September 26th, we just turned five. So that's um, really exciting um, and just really incredible. And uh, so, yes, we are officially five years old to the day, really. And um, so where are we right now? I, I want to kind of start there, sort of next part of the journey. So it, it was important for me to share the origin story because I think when you see me, uh, some people know my story because they've read my book. I published it at 26, Unapologetically Shinjini, memoir at 26. And, and please, once all of you follow me, after this at speaker Shinjini, just DM me and I can email you my book for free. That's not a problem. Uh, but I really, I, I speak to my journey, right? As an immigrant, as a young woman, expectations, pressure. I mean, we've all, I mean, I, I deal with it every day still, you know? And so how was I able to break out? How was I able to become a go-getter? right uh, from a dreamer and uh, that's what i write about in my book so uh, just follow me across all my media platforms and just dm me i can email you unapologetically shinjini um, for free uh, because i think it's important for you to know my story right so that's the origin story and so now i want to kind of come to the last five years right um what what are the challenges what are the opportunities of building a media company first of all i have to say i am extremely um positive about the outlook right now. I think there's a huge push for representation for young women, for young women to be seen as go-getters. Because when I first started, um, to be honest, it was a little bit controversial five years ago for me to publish content about women being go-getters, about young women being go-getters, because I think there was a little bit of pushback, to be honest. You know, uh, much like Indian culture, even Western culture uh, is still sexist, right? It's still racist, right? And so when you see someone like me on American national television, you know, saying that people should be go-getters, I think it was a little bit, I think it was a little bit weird five years ago. Um, but I was able to push through. And I think in the, in the last five years, I have to say this, the market has shifted uh, just, I mean, incredibly so. Right to where now, not only do I have power, I have seat, I have a seat at the table. People have realized that we need black people to lead. Right, we need people of color to lead. Right, we need brown women to lead. Right, we need uh, black men to lead. And so all of a sudden now, I just I have more opportunity than I've ever had as a media company, uh, more audiences than I've ever had, and it's because of this cultural shift, right? You've heard of Black Lives Matter. You've heard of, you know, um, all of these protests for women when they are murdered, you know, when they are raped, when they're killed. I mean, no, people are not okay with this anymore, right? And so I think I am coming in at sort of the perfect time to say that, you know what, we have to have goals, we have to be go-getters and, and, you know, let's stay focused on our journey. Um, so that's kind of the opportunity now, I would say. Uh, it's endless, everything is digital. Everything is digital, uh, which I which I foresaw. I would say five years ago, I definitely thought that is what would happen. But I think COVID especially has just um, accelerated that journey tenfold, twentyfold, thirtyfold. That everything is digital now, right? So any idea I have, my first thought is, oh my god, I have to build you know five million followers on Instagram because that is my media platform, that is my media audience, and then. You can shift them to a website. You know, I can sell at Mintra. I can sell at, you know, all of your, uh, you know, Amazon India. I can sell my books, my journals, my products, because my company is motivation, right? Motivational media. So will I come up with earrings? Um, yes, if they are motivational, if they have sayings on them, you know, if they have inspiration on them, you know. Um, so that's kind of where my head is right now. Motivational 
media, right? If we come out with merchandise, we come out with accessories, we come out with products, everything has to motivate you to be a go-getter. And what does that mean, right? Because I get this question a lot. A dreamer is someone who has a goal, who wants to achieve that goal, who wants to go get that goal, right? But a go-getter is someone who has an action plan, right? Who makes uh, the first move to go get that goal, right? So the greatest example I can give you is uh, is Akshita, right? She's saying that, okay, these kids need like role models. They need to hear from somebody. Okay, so let me just sit here and hope that one day somebody will message me to speak here, right? Dreamer. Right, go getter is what Akshita did, which is she reached out to me on LinkedIn. She messaged me. She said, "Hey, I really want you to speak here. Can you speak?" And I said, "Fantastic, let's do it." That's a go getter, right? So I just want to uh, sort of um, outline the difference. And what we are doing right now is coaching, um, as well as like content strategy for companies um, to monetize their messages uh, and to be go getters, right? How do you? build messaging to actually attract your target audience, to sell to your target audience and to actually make money, right? That is the primary focus of our business right now. Um, and then a lot of my work is also like this coaching, uh, coaching young people, coaching, um, you know, middle-aged people, how to be go-getters, right? So you want to write a book, you want to, um, you know, start your own business. What is your action plan? How do you become a go-getter to do that? And so I think what I'm really happy about is a lot of it has been just me right now, like building action plans for people who don't have one, right? Um, and I think the specialization that we're really focusing on now, which I'm so proud of, truly, um, the Das Media Group is, uh, is young people, is uh, frankly poor people um, from uh, developing countries who have a lot of talent a lot of talent, a lot of capability, a lot of potential, but no path, no path, no path to becoming a go-getter, you know? And I'm talking about young women. I'm talking about young women in Africa. I'm talking about young women in Indi India who message me all the time, right? Saying that I want to go to college. I want to go to school, but my parents don't let me breathe. Don't let me go to school. Don't let me do anything. And they see me and they feel very inspired to achieve their goals. And so I think that's that's the core focus of the Dust Media Group now. And I think um, I, give, I give you that credit because I just started publishing content on social media. I started going on television in America. You know, you should be a go-getter. You should start a business. I did not know who would love me, right? I, I am just putting myself out there. You know, but I think what happened and this has been such a beautiful, beautiful journey is that um, you have embraced me. Right. So do white people love me? Sure. Absolutely. But I think my true power, you know, our true power as a media company now and we have a team and we're growing and it's like freelancers. And again, everything is digital. Everybody's remote um, is that, you know, young India sees themselves in me. You know, young Africa sees themselves in me. Young Latin America sees themselves in me because you all want to achieve your goals, but there is no path. There is no path, right? I mean, we are all coming from a lot of stereotypes, a lot of uh, expectations, a lot of baggage. I mean, Indian culture is only baggage, I sometimes feel, right? And so how do you sort of break away from that baggage to build your own dreams, you know? So I think that's been my real focus with uh, these groups right now. Um, and in terms of opportunities, um, you know, everything will be digital. Uh, we're really building a digital infrastructure that you can come to, right? When you are bored, when you are depressed, when you are um, exhausted by the world and say, you know what? I want to be a go-getter. And so I'm going to follow, you know, Speaker Shinjini. I'm going to go to www.whateverwebuild.com, go-getter, you know, central.com, uh, which we're still working on. You know, I don't know the names. Um, so uh, I, I, we, we have just become profitable. We've been, uh, we've been struggling. <laughs> we've been struggling. So, so we've just become profitable. So now I can dream bigger. I can dream uh, bolder in terms of what I want to build, what we want to build. But, you know, I'm imagining digital destinations that you can come to when you feel depressed, when you feel sad, when you feel tired of the world and say, you know what, I am a go-getter. You know, I my parents' expectations do not define me, what my sister wants me to do, what my brother wants me to do, what my, you know, papa wants me to do does not define me. I am a go-getter and I'm going to build my own path. And so I think what you'll find 
on our platforms is stories, you know, is stories from people like you, you know, is stories from people who look like you, who have your own socioeconomic backgrounds, who have managed to achieve their goals. And I think what we want to do is we want to build processes for you to achieve your goals, right? And so again, a huge barrier in my audience is funding, right? How do you go to college? You don't have enough money. You come from a poor family, but you have a lot of potential. And so those are the things that I'm thinking about every day is how can we make it easier for young people, especially, especially to achieve their goals. And so right now my focus is on building up my social media platforms, which is at Speaker Shinjini, and really building probably more video content. I think that's been a huge um, ask and, and, and something that I've um, definitely registered um, is, is video content to motivate you to take that first move to whatever, lose weight, you know, get an A on your test, graduate college. A lot of my audience actually are the first to go to college in their family. And so they don't have um, examples or role models of people who even went to college, right? And in India, we probably have a slightly different problem that at least for me, my mom is a stay-at-home mom, right? So I don't even know what a working woman looks like. I mean, I've, I have never seen her in my house. I've never, what the hell does she wear? You know, so I mean, I have a lot of young Indian girls who are like, I don't even know, I don't even know what to wear to my first job interview because my mom, stay at home mom, grandmother is a stay at home mom, every, everybody's a housewife, which is great if that's what you want to do. But young India now, at least from what I've seen, um, the girls are not really happy or okay being stay at home moms or wives. You know, that's not enough anymore, right? And so these are the things that I'm struggling with is like, even for the, I'm like, what should I wear? What do I wear on television? I've never seen anybody who looks like me on television, who has a degree, who is an engineer, who's not just an influencer, you know, uh, who's not just Bollywood actress. <laughs> Where do I belong in all of this? So those are things that I'm dealing with. But to be honest, those are things that you're dealing with. So I think in my journey of building content to probably answer my own questions, to be honest, I think I'm also answering a lot of people's questions um, and, and sort of thoughts and, and, and experiences. So opportunities, uh, huge opportunities, right? Digital, 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 digital. I mean, that is the world. Now, am I saying that retail is dead? No, um, I think retail is thriving. I think that, you know, um, just online retail is thriving. E-commerce is thriving, right? But I am very, very clear now that our entry point to my media company is digital. Um, I, I don't think it's television. I don't think it will ever be television. Even if I have my own show on ZTV or Star World India, all of which I am actively, like that's all on my list um, to build Indian uh, television properties. Uh, and listen, I don't know if you even watch those shows. I don't know if you watch you know, those channels. And even if you do, it's probably on your phone. Right. It's probably on your phone. It's probably on your iPad. It's probably on your you know, iPhone, iWatch, whatever, Android. So I'm very, very clear that young India, especially because you you are all so valuable to me uh, because I, I feel connected to you in a way that I don't probably feel connected uh, to anybody else. Um, is 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 digital right so we build out my digital platforms right social media essentially is my entryway is my gate point and then we sort of build web properties right so that's kind of what we're focusing on now is uh, the dustmediagroup.com um shinjinidas.com what does that look like what do i want people to feel and experience when they come to my website you know when they come to my world because that's really what i'm doing right like when you enter shinjini's world um, it's a different world. You know, I think differently. I'm very positive. I'm very uplifting. I'm very inspiring. Even for me, I've always been this way. And I think my entry into the media was motivated by the fact that nobody else is this way. Nobody else inspires me. Right. I mean, if I wanted to read random motivational quotes on Google, I can do that. But I'm still not inspired, you know. And so I think that is what still drives me is that you need somebody to push you you need somebody to motivate you you know and i i want to be that person uh, for you so digital is the entry point um web properties huge demand um, and we're building those out and i'm really working on that right now um video content is absolutely huge 
um, on your phone, on vertical video, horizontal video, many, many different kinds of video. And I think also the way that the video is done, you know, it's storytelling, it's intimate, it's authentic. And even the videos that I see now, um, I don't know if I'm necessarily that impressed, you know, especially motivational videos. They're very like unrelatable. It's very I don't think I can achieve half the things that they talk about, right? And I also think you think that you cannot achieve half the things that they talk about. So how do we make motivational content and videos more relatable to you, to Shreya, to Priyansh, you know, who's coming from a middle class family in Rajasthan and wants to be a lawyer? That's where my head is right now, you know, in terms of building content that is not just relatable, but that actually gives you an action plan to achieve your goals, right? So I think that's kind of where we're, um, where my mind is right now with my team and expansion and, and all of that. And then of course I want, you know, product lines. I think that is a huge, 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 huge demand, right? Product lines, whether that's in retail, that is international e-commerce, Amazon India, Mintra, all of your, I mean, you have, you guys have a bazillion e-commerce platforms that I want my hands on. I want my hands on all of them. Uh, because I think that is that is India. I mean, you you do what we do, right? You order food, Zomato Zindabad, right? You do all of that. Um, and so I want to penetrate that whole market, right? In terms of motivational media products for young people, um, audio products, you know, journals, accessories, things that will things that will uh, inspire you to keep moving, you know, and it's, it can be as simple as a whiteboard that has inspirational messages on them that are my messages, you know? So I think the market is such, and if you are looking for business advice, the biggest thing that I can say is do not try to revolutionize the market, just build on the market, you know? And so I think for such a long time, I thought that everything I did has to be so different, <laughs> you know, just, just never before been done. And it's just so hard to do that, you know? And so that's when I shifted my mindset to, can I, can I build this better? You know, because motivational media self-help is a multi-billion dollar global industry, self-help. Right. And so I'm not starting it. I am no, by no means starting it. But I think that we can do it a lot better than the current uh, self-help gurus and products and TV shows and whatever else they have. You know, so I think that's kind of where my head is right now. Products are a huge um, a vision for me um, in the future, in the upcoming future. Expand on digital, land on e-commerce, probably have some retail locations, pop up shops. How do I encourage you to be a go getter? Right. And that's where what what does that product look like? Is it a bracelet? You know, is it a whiteboard? Is it a journal? Is it what is it? And I'm still trying to figure that out to build our sort of initial list of uh, products. Right. Um, so that's that's kind of where we're moving um, in terms of opportunity, um, in terms of a community. Right. I think we've really built a strong foundation of go getters. That's what I call all of you online. Right. And it's amazing because every brand, every company needs a foundation, needs a community. And I think what we've done a really good job of, if you follow me at Speaker Shinjini, is that my content is very relatable to the uh, achiever, to the brown person, to the black person who has a bazillion obstacles in their way, right? From family pressure to racism, to this, to that, to rape, to murder. I mean, you name it. And my people are facing that. And so you need somebody to keep pulling you up and say, no, come up, you're a go-getter, you're a go-getter. So when I think about my target audience, to be honest, um, it, is, it is people of color. It is people of color because we have been held back for so long for centuries, for centuries and centuries and centuries, right? So when you talk about young women, young men, those are the people that I'm looking to unlock, that I'm looking to make go-getters so that, you know, Kostov and Shreyas and all of you come back to me 10 years later and say, you know what, I'm 29 now, and guess what, I started a company. I'm a go-getter. And those are the stories that we want to be responsible for. You know, the Dust Media Group um, is, is really building up other uh, go-getters, you know. Uh, because the thing is, if you're already very successful and following me, um, I'm sure I can contribute to your life and I can make you more positive. But the real impact, to be honest, is the zero to hero stories, you know. And I have so many of those 
already, right? So girls in the Philippines follow me, um, literally on the verge of prostitution, right? Literally on the verge of prostitution, message me, say that I'm gonna drop out if I don't have money to pay for college. Um, and I paid for her books. You know, I paid for her books. She doesn't have to drop out now. And she's like, oh my God, I'm a go-getter now. Thank you so much. Those are the stories that I want to be responsible for, right? Girls that are on the edge, you know, people who don't come from, frankly, rich families, um, don't come from a lot of support, but they follow me. They follow my content and say, you know what? Somebody gives a shit about me. Somebody cares about me in this world. Somebody believes in me. I'm a go-getter. I'm not going to give up on myself because you come to my platform. You'll see a lot of stories. You'll see a lot of just positive content that says, you know what, Shreyas, you can achieve your goal. I believe in you. Even if your parents think that you are, you know, uh, useless, that you think this house is a hotel, you know, all the things that I've heard of my whole life growing up, you know, um, that somebody believes in you, you know, and somebody believes in your ability to be a go-getter. So that's my vision. Um, a lot of opportunity, frankly, too much opportunity right now. I mean, digital has just exploded my landscape. You know, we're already reaching 15 million views a month across my social media platforms. And it's just literally exponentially growing every day. So um, we're not worried about that. Um, I want to hit on some challenges, though. And then I want to take your questions um, if we have uh, time, because I, I really want to take your questions. Um, challenges. Uh, I, I really want to hit that. Um, I have already faced a lot of challenges right in these last five years. Um, I would say the biggest challenge has been identifying your target audience, right? Identifying your community. Um, in the beginning, because, you know, the word go-getter, especially in America, is very uh, common, actually. It's very, very common. A lot of people say it. And so I made the mistake of targeting, um, frankly, privileged people, right? Rich people, privileged people, mostly white people. Um, to say, oh my gosh, you're a go-getter. You know, I really want to inspire you. I really want to achieve, uh, inspire you to achieve your goals. And it's not that they weren't inspired. They definitely are. They love me. Uh, you know, they, it's a very positive relationship. But I think that that feeling wasn't there. You know, because if you're a lawyer and your dad is a doctor and your mom is a surgeon, you know, and and you are trying to be a lawyer, um, you're probably not going to fail. I'm just saying that, right? You're probably not going to fail. Right. And I know that young India understands this better than anyone. Right. All of you have friends where, you know, the mom is friends with Nitambani and the dad is friends with Mr. Tata. And that kid is probably not going to fail in starting a business, to be completely honest. Why? Because connections are a thing, you know, and money helps a lot. OK. And so I think I was targeting those people. And while they were very grateful for my inspiration, for my positivity, I think that I think that feeling was missing, you know, and when I really analyzed it, I figured that my brand is uniquely positioned to change the life of a dreamer who wants to become a go getter. Right. Not necessarily somebody who's already rich and just wants to become a little bit richer. Right. And so that's when I really changed my focus. I would say this was about two years ago, late 2019. I changed my focus to targeting really struggling people, um, students, right? People in Africa, young aspiring entrepreneurs, people who are like just about to make it, but they haven't made it yet. And guess what? If they don't have the proper support, if they don't have the proper mentorship, they will not make it. They will fall out. They will kill themselves. They will die. Right. And I and I sort of really switched my focus to them about two years ago. And my life has never been the same, you know, and it's because those are the people who need the support, who need the mentor, who need the who just who need positive encouragement. I mean, the number of times that I get DMs from from Indians saying that nobody in my family supports me. Nobody in my family believes in me, right? I am a girl. My parents told me that I, they didn't want me to be born. These are regular messages in my DMs all the time, right? And so when I think about who I exist for, I exist for those people. Now, if you're a surgeon and you want to become an entrepreneur, I'm sure I can help you. I'm sure I can motivate you. And, and I'm sure I do motivate you. But the person who's like, my parents didn't want me because I was a girl, I'm about to kill myself. And she follows me and she's like, oh my God, you're amazing. I want to be like this. That is a very different impact. 
that is a very, very different impact. And it's something that I now I'm so proud, you know, to share that I am a part of those stories every day now. You know, girls who are on the edge, girls who are literally like today, I'm about to sell my body. I'm about to enter prostitution. And I messaged her and I said, listen, you don't have to do that. OK, you don't have to do that. You can go to school. You can get a job. And now she's like a lawyer. She's I mean, in Nigeria. Right. So I just those are the stories that I want to be a part of. Right. Those are the stories that I truly believe is my uh, purpose. Right. Building go getters from dreamers from very disadvantaged communities. Right. Because you may be poor, but you're not you're not dumb. You're not incapacitated. You're just poor. Right. So I think that's kind of where my head is at in terms of um, challenges. So huge challenge identifying the target audience. And I think ever since I switched my target audience, my life has been you know, incredible in terms of viewership, in terms of just understanding the content, you know, understanding what I'm trying to say, you know, because if you just follow me randomly, um, maybe you you are confused about what I'm doing. But if you are my target audience, which is a student on the edge, a student who's about to drop out, I mean, my content will change your life, you know, and, and so I think that target audience was very important. It's still a challenge. I would say it's still a challenge, but I'm now staying laser focused and I mean laser focused on uh, people in India, people in Africa, people in Asia, people in Latin America and frankly, everybody else is secondary. Even America is secondary to you, to you guys, to you girls, you know, because I realize I exist for you and everybody else is like part two and, and part three. Right. Um, so I think the target audience has been a huge challenge. I think uh, access. Right. So for me to get on television, to share my message, holy. I mean, how do I even get on television? How, I mean, it's just I still I still and I it, this is how traumatized I am, to be honest, uh, about the media is even now, five years later, I'm still like, oh, my God. So if I want to get on the MTV roadies show, how do I do that? If I want to get on MTV, you know, the VMAs, how do I do that to speak, to spread my message, to be a go getter, to be an inspirational speaker, leader, television personality? How do I do that? So access is such a huge problem, such a huge problem, because the media makes it difficult for for normal people to be on television. I mean, how many plus size people do you see on television? How many young women do you see on television whose dad is not Ratan Tata, right? Like it's hard and they make it hard. And I, I don't know why they make it so hard because people like normal people. So I don't know why they make it so hard, uh, but it is so hard. And so access is a huge challenge and, and still, you know, remains so. Anything, entering a retail location with your products, you know, uh, building the right audiences, getting verified on Instagram. I mean, just the challenges are limitless in terms of access uh, because they want to control who like listens to you, you know, and I just that's not what I believe in. I believe that you should you should have all the opportunity in the world and that your merit should define where you go, not who you know and how much money you have. You know, that's not what I believe. And so uh, so access is still a huge challenge, but gradually we are kind of breaking down the doors or, you know, working our way up because the way that we're building my media company is that, yes, it is a media platform. There is a services business helping companies monetize their messages. But ultimately, I want to be and am a celebrity, right? Celebrity brand. It's motivational speaker. I want people to follow me like I'm the magnet, right? So I want to be on television shows. I want to have my own television show. I want my own motivational speaking tours. Um, all of that is difficult. Uh, and not to mention when you consider that I don't know anybody who has done that and who looks like me, who is a young Indian person, female, whatever. So, I mean, I don't have any role models. I don't have a, I don't have a path, you know, and so every day access is the struggle, right? So if, if I want a motivational speaking tour, do I need an agent? I mean, do I need like, who's going to book the theaters? Who's going to like, fill, you know, promote it? Like, there's just so much that like I'm thinking about that sometimes feels very overwhelming, but then I'm like, wait, you have to have a team. You have to be associated with, I don't know, the agent, the this, the that. I mean, there are ways to accomplish your goal, right? And so I think access is a huge challenge. Target audience is a huge challenge. And I think uh, and I think monetization is a huge challenge, right? So when you're dealing with, in my case, I am explicitly targeting a poor group of people, right? Like they're struggling. They're not go-getters. How do you monetize them? I mean, they don't have any money. 
right? And so I think that is a constant challenge, right? So I'm like, read my book, it's $26. You know, my people are like, I don't have any money. I'm like, great, cool, fantastic. So I'm constantly in this cycle of like everybody that I'm motivating and I'm helping, everybody's poor because they're a dreamer, because they're not yet a go-getter, right? But how do you, like, how do I stay afloat, you know, from like sales? Um, so I think that's been a huge um, problem. And I think it will continue to be a problem because everybody that I'm targeting, everybody who loves me now, uh, they are they are struggling. They are struggling. They are not financially stable. Um, they are uh, poor, actually, in many cases. And so, how do you how how do you monetize them? You know. So I think well, I found other ways. You know, uh, the way I look at it is like if you're in India, if you're in Africa, um, you know, you don't have money to pay for my digital products or whatnot. Um, you know, you can watch my TV show, you know, once it's out in Kenya or whatever, right? You can watch my TV show in Star World and this and that. And, you know, you can really relate to me. And guess what? You're not paying me, right? But you are a viewer. You are a consumer. You are contributing to TRPs, to ratings, to this. And that becomes a very sort of powerful uh, monetization metric, you know. Um, but that's something that I struggled with big time um, a few years ago, especially because I'm just like nobody has any money. And at that time I was selling my book very heavily and I still am, I still am three years later. Uh, and even in America, most people don't have $26, you know, because even in America, people live paycheck to paycheck, right? Which is, I get paid now, I spend all my money and in two weeks I have zero, literally zero, and I have to start again. And, and so this is the constant cycle, you know? Um, so I think that has been a huge challenge that how do we monetize our demographics? Because if you look at most influencers, you know, who like me have some 500,000 followers and whatever, however many I have now, 600,000 followers across my platforms, um, they're making a lot of money, a lot of money. But then I have to remember that they're white, that they're white women, right? Who are targeting other white women who have more money than brown people in this country sometimes, right? Who have more money than black people in this country sometimes. So I think the conversation becomes very important and it comes back to my original theme, which is motivating young black and brown people to be go-getters so that we are not poor, right? So that we're not struggling all the time, right? And so I think the challenges, essentially, I do wanna close on this, the challenges have made my opportunities more relevant than ever, right? Because I think for such a long time, I felt so frankly angry uh, and sad that I am so talented, I am so kid, but why is my revenue not what Jennifer's is, you know? And then I had to peel it back and I said, but that is exactly why I'm here, is to make cost of a Kropati, right? To make Disha not poor and not relying on her abusive husband because she doesn't have any money, right? I mean, if you think about why I'm here, that is why I'm here. So that Disha gets a job, that she goes to school, that she earns money so that she doesn't have to be abused her whole life, right? And so I think for me, what I really tried to do, and I really wanna end on this, at least my lecture part, is reframe your challenges as opportunities. Because I think for such a long time, I felt so angry and, and part of me still does, you know, because I'm looking at my numbers and I'm like, oh my God, this should be so much higher. But because I'm targeting really struggling people, they're low. But then I reframed that to say, you know what? This is a blessing because all of these people's stories, I'm going to be a part of, right? So when Disha is like, oh my God, I'm leaving my abusive husband because of you, because now I have a job and I'm a go-getter and I'm making money. That is, that is my story. That is part of my story, right? So I think that is how I've reframed it because again, for such a long time, I felt so angry um, because I'm self-funded, you guys. I'm self-funded, right? And to this day, my parents are like, whatever, this is dumb, right? Story of my life, all Indian parents, nobody cares, right? Until you're rich and you pay for everybody, in which case everybody will care. Um, but right now, you know, I feel like they still think it's whatever, right? right? Dumb, silly. Um, and so I'm self-funded. And so when I look at my counterparts who are making $20,000 per digital book launch a day, a day, and I look at how talented and strong my story is, and I'm making, you know, one fraction of that, it does hurt. It does hurt. And it still hurts today as I'm sort of talking about it. But then I, I, I have to reframe it to say, you know what? Money will come right? Money will come. We're already profitable. Money is already coming, but let's stay focused on building these dreamers 
to be go-getters. And guess what? We will have a more powerful story. We will have a more powerful story. So I really want to encourage you to reframe your uh, challenges to be opportunities, right? And so one of the things that I say all the time is when you start from the bottom, there is nowhere else to go but up. Right. You cannot go less than this. You really can't. Right. Um, you look at poverty in India. That's the lowest. You, you literally there's nothing else worse than that in the world. Right. And so if you're starting there, if you're starting from a poor family, the only place you can go is up. Right. And so I think that motivates me a lot, too, is like, let's say my income is, you know, five five thousand dollars. Right. And my white counterparts are making twenty thousand, thirty thousand, forty thousand unlimited money. I actually am motivated because I'm like, you know what? I'm at 5,000. I can only go up. It's so low in the long scheme of things that how can it be lower than this? <laughs> you know, it can't. So it can only go up. So I think that motivates me now, you know, because before I, I really felt uh, angry um, and I really felt sad um, because I'm like, we are so talented, but like, why is the money just not there? And that, but then I'm like, you know what? The audience is there and guess what? Audience drives money in the media. And even if these people can't pay for my book or other digital products that we come out with, even merchandise that we come out with, guess what? They're gonna watch the show. They're gonna keep watching on YouTube. They're gonna, and that is money, right? And so I think that's kind of been my um, journey, uh, but it's, uh, let me tell you, it's, it's very difficult to reframe your perspective that way, you know, um, because most people, they struggle so much uh, that it's, it's hard to, it's hard to move forward from that mindset, but I've tried, I've, I've worked on myself and I, I think, I, I think I'm there now. I think I'm there now. I, I, I don't feel angry anymore. I don't feel so angry anymore. I feel like this is good. Like God has a different purpose for me. Nobody, nobody is motivating young brown people in the way that I am, is not motivating young black people the way I am. And God will take care of us, you know, um, and, and that's how I feel. So um, hopefully this is helpful. So if you're if you're taking notes, if you're listening, I would say the top opportunities um, just as a as a summary, digital, 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 digital. If you're taking notes, number one, digital, I would say number two, um, just I mean, <laughs> digital to retail, you know, digital to television, di just just the, that path, you know, digital to other things. I would say that's number two. I would say number three is um, a lot of uh, intimate access, you know, with social media, with digital. You really get to reach people in a, in a way that I've never reached people. Right. So those are the opportunities. Challenges, I would say target audience. I would say access and I would say monetization. Um, so I would say those are the um, challenges and opportunities of building a media company. And again, we're five years old. We are profitable. We are helping companies monetize their messages, helping uh, dreamers become go-getters, coaching, consulting, um, my book sales, um, on track to six-figure gross revenue this year, which for me might as well be $5 million, you know, um, because that's how I feel like, because I've been at very, very low the first four years um so yeah so that's my story um i hope this is um uh, not too traumatizing uh if it is uh then you know welcome to my life <laughs> i've also been traumatized <laughs> um but but if you have any questions please let me know um and i know it's kind of late for you all so i appreciate you joining and 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 listening and staying but uh this is our this is our collective uh, joy misery um yeah, I don't know. I really, I really feel uh, connected to you. So, <laughs> oh, it was wonderful listening to you, Shifni. First of all, it was very authentic. It was raw. It was inspiring, and I definitely got a lot to learn. I really liked how you focused your entire business plan on user acquisition instead of just looking at profitability in the long run. And yeah, I know a lot of brands that may not be profitable right now. But just because of the network of customers they have, just because of the work they're doing, they are loved by people, uh, you know, in the places that they are operating in. There are many brands in India as well. And I think that is the long term focus that businesses should have. And that's how, just like you said, revenues, uh, that's what drives revenues. That's what drives cash flows. And that's what keeps businesses afloat. Profitability does follow eventually. And first of all, congratulations that your business is now profitable. That's really a huge thing. And I'm pretty sure listening to the challenges you've had, 
it must not have been an easy job so yeah it was wonderful listening to you and guys the audience thank you for joining us if you have any questions we'll be taking questions in the next 4 5 minutes you can write the questions in the chat box uh one second i'm just allowing that yes so just let me know if you can type yeah so guys if you have any questions you can drop it in the chat box or you can unmute yourself as well i'm going to share the access so i would like to ask question hmm So, ma'am, okay. as you mentioned, that a lot of people seek you out themselves to have their stories heard. But uh, I just wanted to know: Have there been any instances where you seeked out any particular person or a group of people? And if yes, then how do you know whom to seek out? What story to seek out? You were saying like mentorship, like, yeah. like advice. Yeah. Um, yeah, Anushree. Um, so I just want to start by saying this is a global problem. There is a mentorship shortage. Number one. Number two, especially in Indian communities, right? And if you look at the root cause, because I've really thought about this a lot. Because to be honest, Anushree, and I'm not trying to gain sympathy from any of you, but a lot of people have not uh, helped me. I don't think they've mentored me. I have reached out to them. I have done everything that you are doing. I have messaged them. I have. reached out i have you know added them on linkedin like what else do you want me to do you know i've done everything but like no one cared you know um and i've thought a lot about why they don't care especially in the indian community because i'm specifically referencing uh, indian women uh, entrepreneurs uh, in america indian women entrepreneurs in america somebody that i can learn from um and i think about why she never responded and i think it's because uh, of you know competition maybe jealousy maybe they don't frankly they don't want you to win you know and so because a lot of indian uh, people young people ask me this that nobody responds to you and i think the root cause of that is uh is that they don't want you to win right and so what do what do i what advice do i give you as a go getter i'm sure right <laughs> the advice that i would give you which i've also used is go get people who will help you right and so for me to be honest now that is a lot of white men that is a lot of black men like my support now is coming from very different people right whereas i was trying to target indian women i thought they would really like help me a lot of them are jealous right a lot of them are jealous they don't want you to win they feel threatened by you they are jealous of you right and to be honest i don't have the time nor the energy to like focus on why you don't want me to win because i'm trying to win right and and you're trying to win and you're trying to go to college and you're trying to start a business and so the biggest advice that i could give any of you like a go getter is to go get people who will help you and that's what i've done you know and a lot of my support now mentorship advice advisorship for my company is is frankly coming from men is coming from older men is coming from white men you know black men and whatever and so i think now i'm like you know what it doesn't have to be women you know if if women are not going to help me if they're not going to support me whatever right next move on let's go you know so i think i've definitely adopted that model anushree and now um the media advisory team that i'm building cuz all of this will go on my website um the dasmediagroup.com uh is is men is men is older men they are like 45 46 50 um but literally the most helpful the most uh business uh, minded people that i i know you know um so i think the biggest advice cuz i think mentorship is a huge problem for you guys and girls all of you because india and if you look at the roots it we are a poor country we are a poor country that is a poor mindset right so all the time you don't want to share tutors because you think that kid will do better than you and then they'll get into college they'll get into symbiosis and you'll be on the streets right that's the mentality that we're living with right even in america even here where i live anushri indian people do not want to share who their tutor is because they think that i will get into college and they will be on the streets in america okay so in india it is worse 
right? And so what, what I want to tell you is do not get discouraged by people who do not want to help you. That is the biggest advice I can give you because there will be people willing to help you like me, like others, um, whose job is to help you. And I think I have found that uh, in men. I have found that in older men and, and they are my advisors now. They are my team now. I always reach out to them. I always message them and, uh, and I, whatever, I mean, it's not women, but whatever, like that's kind of where I am. You know what I mean? So, um, does that help? Because yeah. I think when you're like laser focused on a goal, Anushri, even if a horse wants to help me, I would take help from a horse. You know, like I'm, I, it doesn't have to be a woman. It doesn't have to be an Indian. So I think what was holding me back was the thoughts that I had, that it has to be a young Indian woman or whatever. And it's like, if it's not her, then it's fine. It, do, it doesn't have to be her, you know. Um, so I think sometimes we, we get caught up in that because we are only expecting help from one type of person, right? Um, but there are a lot of people who can help you. Right? Shishi, so, I think a couple of other students have also asked questions. Yes, yes, yes. Have a look. Yes. Uh, the questions are in the chat box. OK. Where is the chat box? I'm like new to Teams. Uh, yeah, it's on the uh, top uh, right uh, corner. Uh, right. If you mind if I chip in. Uh, yes, uh, Karthik, if you can unmute yourself and ask the question, that would be great as well. I'm Drew. Do you guys mind if I go in? Yes, yes, sure, sure. sure, sure. Uh, can you just tell us about your journey in the Georgia Tech? I found it university very interesting, to be honest. Yeah, totally, totally. So industrial engineering through from Georgia Tech, um, really, really great degree. Um, processes, optimization, engineering. Um, yeah, it's all like it's all theoretical, right? Right. I've never built a bridge. I've never built a car. Um, it, everything is like theoretical. So it's like mapping out processes, regression analysis. Um, you know, why, what, what is like statistically significant versus what is not statistically significant, a lot of data, a lot of data science. So it's all very theoretical, it's very abstract, um, which is why a lot of people like make fun of it and call it imaginary engineering. But really it's like creating, it's, it is entrepreneurship, right? It's like creating something from nothing. The only difference between me and college and me now is now I'm selling it for money. Um, whereas I don't think there was a lot of training for us in college about sales or about selling your, you know, um, data set or invention or anything, but it was more like, you know, data science analysis, all of that. So definitely using my degree every day. Um, but now my processes are all digital. My processes are media, uh, but definitely proud, 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 proud. I think you can see my, my degree right there. So very proud to be an industrial engineer. Uh, and I think it's one of my, um, it's it's one of the, the biggest things about me because there's not that many female engineers uh, in my you know position I would say uh, who are sort of camera facing so hopefully that's helpful so I'm I'm definitely I want to encourage more women to go get engineering degrees for sure for sure so okay uh, Shinjani Karthik in the chat box he has asked that motivation deals with looking things in a positive way mostly but how can someone push positivity even through adverse situations so how to yeah. stay positive basically when everything else around you there's not a positive environment around you basically yeah and and guess what dude um that's my life okay that's everybody who follows me their life so it's very much our reality um so nothing you're saying is unusual um, I think that um, the biggest advice that I can give you as a go-getter is that um, your mind is in your control, right? And so literally yesterday, you know, my dad, that's what I'm saying, like you guys and girls all think that I'm like privileged. I'm literally dealing with the same shit that you're dealing with every day, right? So I'm still living at home. I'm 29. Um, and, you know, my dad is like, you have to contribute to retirement. You're not contributing to retirement. Like, I'm not going to be here. I'm going to die. Like every day, it's the same shit, right? Like, however old you are, especially as a girl, it's the same shit, different day, right? So I really want to say that um, the biggest thing that I've done 
uh, and that I continue to do that I'm that I'm so proud of as a go getter is I am controlling my own mind. Right. And so you are throwing negativity at me. You are saying that I'm going to fail. You are saying that I suck. Um, you are saying that this is all dumb, whatever. Right. What well, a variation of things for your goals. But I am validating myself that no, girl, you got this. You are a go getter, Anushri. You are a go getter, Tanvi. You are a go getter, Triparna. You are a go getter, Vidisha. You're amazing, Stuti. Like you got. So I am giving myself a different message, right? So my dad is like, what the heck? This is dumb whatever but then i'm like no you're amazing like sneha is not going to kill herself because of you like that's powerful you know um so i think i am always giving myself a different message um so i think that's the answer so everybody else is like even to this day and listen that's the thing you think i'm different i was at a shadi right two weeks ago and there they're like that's when you're getting married it's the same thing like i am not different from you <laughs> in any way you know, and, you know, I'm telling her, I'm like, yeah, auntie, like, hopefully, you know, when he, you know, you know refuses to change, you know, my last name, because I'm not changing my last name um, ever. So just things like that. So I'm giving myself a different message, right? Everybody's obsessed with when I'm going to get married, when I'm going to have kids. But I'm sitting here going, wow, I'm building a company. I'm so amazing. I'm a go getter. So I think it's about building a different message for yourself, you know, versus what your mom, dad, brother, sister, uncle, auntie, Cha 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 chi neighbors, right? Because in India, everybody has an opinion about you, right? Um, I don't. You you should not care about that, right? What does Akshita feel about herself? That is where I want the conversation to start and end. Does that make sense? Does that help? Definitely. Uh, Joel, did you do you want to unmute yourself and ask the question? I think that would be better. Uh, okay, so he has asked what would be the strategic advantage of having a business set up in the US when mm. the main target customers belong to Asia or Africa? So who, who asked this? What's his name? Uh, Joel Kevinson. Joel. He's he. He. he? Yes. Yeah. OK. OK. Joel, uh, you listen to me. You listen to me. I go to Latin America. I go to Paraguay, Joel, and I say I'm from America. I mean, I might as well be Jesus. I might as well be Jesus. I mean, on earth, right? So I think the power is uh, is in the attention, is in the attention. You know, um, America, I must say, America is the master of brand building. I mean, it, there's no stronger <laughs> brand than America. Um, Indians are by nature aspirational people. Africans are aspirational people. So the minute I say I'm from America and everybody's like, like, okay, like God, God himself, or no, God is a woman uh, is here, you know? So I think that's pretty incredible because I think the biggest problem with media is like, how do you even get the attention of, of people? You know, um, so I think the fact that, you know, I, I don't have that. I really I don't have that problem anymore um, because of that. And because I'm affiliated with the U.S. Embassy now and like speaking to um, kids in different countries and, you know, motivating you to start businesses and be go getters like attention is no longer a problem, you know, which is huge because I feel like that's the number one problem for any media company is how do you how do you get attention? You know, how do you get attention? And for me. America has really solved um, that problem. So, I mean, anywhere I go, America, everybody's like, okay, are you going to pay me? Like, are you giving me money now? Like, the questions are, are plenty. Um, so, no, no, it's, it's, uh, it's a tension. That's the biggest advantage. So. <laughs> I think we're done with most of the questions. Ojas, are you there? Uh, yeah, we can move ahead with the vote of thanks. And Dr. Ashutosh, in fact, he had to drop off the call a few minutes ago because he okay. had some emergency. But okay. he conveys his gratitude to you for joining us today. He's very happy. And yeah, for all of us, the session has been wonderful. And we definitely look forward to having you on board some other time as well, whenever time permits, whenever you're available and your calendar is free. So yes, we can plan another session of sorts. And yeah, Ojas, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Ashita. Okay. Uh, I'll just be giving a brief vote of thanks, Shanjini, if that's okay with you. Uh, on behalf of our director, Dr. Adya Sharma, our beloved faculty, staff, and our dear students, 
I would like to take this opportunity to thank Ms. Uh, Shinjini for this wonderful session. We thank you, Shinjini, for taking time out of your busy schedule and giving us so many valuable and practical insights. You definitely are a role model to the students present here today. I would also like to extend my gratitude to all those who helped facilitate this session, especially Dr. Ashutosh sir and Deepa ma'am for their constant support and guidance. Lastly, I would like to thank each and every student for their active participation and for cooperating with us. Thank you and stay safe, everyone. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. And one ask for all of you, please follow me. Akshita, do they have my um, handle? I feel like they do. Uh, um, yes, yes. I think we have shared your profile with the students. So they do know a little bit about you. They have your profile. And we'll definitely forward uh, your content and the work that you've been doing with the students. It will definitely fantastic. be helpful with them. Yeah, just add me everywhere. That's the biggest help you can you can do for, for me right now. Just follow me at Speaker Shinjini, add me on LinkedIn, you know, and I again I just um you you are my priority. You are my priority. I exist for you, because of you, um, from you, you know, uh, and I really I'm here to motivate you to be a go-getter. So thank you to everyone who has facilitated this just incredible series of lectures and dialogues with students. You know, you are the future. You are a go-getter, and um, I'm really, I'm, I'm here for you. I mean, every day I wake up, um, I think about you, you know, I really do. Thank you so much, Shanjani. It was great. And yeah, I think it comes to an end, even though I wouldn't want it to. But yeah, uh, it was wonderful speaking to you, and we look forward to having you again. Guys, uh, we've wrapped up the session, so you're free to leave and attend to other tasks. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am.